This is Joanne Folletta, the musicians of the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra, and I are so happy to welcome you to our new season. We've been waiting for this moment. We've missed you, and we are really thrilled that we can play for you again. We can't open the doors of Klein Hands at this point, but we can play for you from the stage, so you have all the benefit of the beautiful Klein Hands acoustics, and you can see your Buffalo Philharmonic musicians up close and personal in wonderful repertoire. For me, one of the, the silver linings of being home so much this spring and summer has been the opportunity to research new composers. And I found a tremendous young woman, an American voice that is so fresh and vibrant, Jessie Montgomery. We're playing her Starburst, which she composed in 2012. Her style is eclectic, filled with folk music and improvisation and spirituals and virtuoso string writing. She herself is a great violinist. She said that Starburst, this three and a half great minutes of music, is a play on imagery of rapidly changing colors, a multi-dimensional soundscape. In her words, the rapid formation of new stars in a galaxy. So imagine stars bursting into life. It's a wonderful piece. First time the Buffalo Philharmonic has ever played Jesse Montgomery's work on our season. We hope you enjoy it. We are following Jesse's work with an American classic, Aaron Copland's Appalachian Spring. Like most of the composers of his generation, Copland was at first excited by dissonant harmonies and jagged rhythms of the 1920s, but he became concerned about the inaccessibility of the music he was writing. He wanted to create instead a language that would speak to his audience, to the American people. So his style changed and became communicative, immediate, using folk songs, Latin American rhythms, New England hymns, written in a style that was deceptively simple and direct in the best sense. The quintessential Copeland work is this Appalachian Spring, probably his crowning achievement. It was written as a ballet for the great dancer Martha Graham, who wanted to create a ballet based upon the memories of her grandmother as a young bride moving to Appalachia and being on a farm, beginning her life with her husband on a farm. It has direct appeal, but it's a piece also of consummate skill and subtlety. It speaks of universal feelings in the vernacular of American speech rhythms, and it expressed the vision and experience of the American people, open, tonal, consonant harmonies, engaging rhythms, great vitality. He created an American sound that was luminous, wide open, fresh, and radiant. We play the original version tonight for 13 players, written in 1944, which won a Pulitzer Prize. There is a part of the Appalachian Spring that you all recognize, and maybe it is the most beloved him to in our country. It is uh, called Simple Gifts, and it's a song taken from the Shaker religion, or a religion in the northeastern part of the United States, um, a utopian society. And the Shakers believe that one could shake out one's sins by spinning around in a circle and coming down in the right place. And uh, it's a beautiful philosophy that, that Aaron Copeland really liked. And he, uh, as the climax of his Appalachian Spring, used that song. You won't hear the words, but I want you to know what the words of the song are. Tis a gift to be simple. Tis a gift to be free. Tis a gift to come down where you ought to be. And when you find yourself in the place just right, twill be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend we shan't be ashamed. To turn, to turn, will be our delight. For by turning, turning, we come round right. A beautiful philosophy and an expression of the kind of human being Aaron Copeland was. The highlight of our concert is going to be a performance by our own concertmaster, Nikki Chewy, of Vivaldi's beloved Four Seasons. Now this piece was written almost 300 years ago, 1723, and it's still as fresh and vibrant as it was then. 
Vivaldi was born in Venice, Italy in 1675, and he was a very distinguished looking man, very unusual. He was quite tall for an Italian, and he had red hair, which was also unusual. Um, and he was a violinist, and he was a priest. And in 1703, he was asked to be music director at the Ospedale della Pietà, that was um, a girl's orphanage attached to the Church of the Pietà. Some of you may have seen that if you've ever visited Venice. It's right on the Grand Canal. That's where Vivaldi worked. Uh, the orphanage was a little different than we might think of today. Um, it accepted um, daughters, only, only girls, daughters of indigent families who couldn't afford to feed them and, and raise them, children born out of wedlock, and also infants and young girls who were handicapped or disfigured in some way, or invalids, and whose families no longer wanted them. They went to this ospitale, and the uh, ospitale was supported by wealthy Venetians, and also visited often because it became a center of music. Vivaldi wrote all of his music for these young girls. He taught them, he conducted them, they became virtuosos. Imagine the first performance of Four Seasons the, with his star young woman playing the part of this beautiful work that has lived for now 300 years. Um, an amazing story of this piece. Vivaldi also described what it was about in poetry for each one of the seasons. Spring is filled with bird songs and uh, murmuring of brooks and gentle breezes. Summer with burning heat and uh, everything languishing and also a fierce thunderstorm. Autumn with the joy of the harvest, the pleasure of wine and the hunt and winter, shivering in the freezing snow, stomping your feet, your teeth are chattering, but also the pleasures of sitting by the fireside and watching it snow outside. At the end, Vivaldi returns outside and uh, we hear the ice cracking and the winds howling. And he says in his poetry, such is winter which despite everything brings much joy. This performance with Nikki and the Buffalo Philharmonic we hope will bring you great joy as we celebrate our new season.